I did see there's this game, Throne and Liberty. Is this the game that you guys were telling me about? It's a new MMO. It just got announced. This one's a little bit shorter. Let's go with the shorter video, okay, guys? Yeah, let's go with the shorter video. I like Kira. We watch them all the time. Why not? If I had a dollar for every time somebody talked about the imminent release of Project TL, I'd probably have about $11. One for each year the game languished in the fabled development hell. Jesus. This game has gone through more changes than my YouTube channel, which I've had to bring out of MMORPG content slumber to talk about this game. Yeah, I love how like a lot of people nowadays, all they do, this is, I see like CoffeeZilla too, because I'm subscribed to him after the Ice Poseidon thing. All the time, like some people have like an entire YouTube presence dedicated just to covering NFT scams. And they never run out of content. They, they never do because it's like, oh, it, you know, it's Tuesday. Let's see who's, you know, which retired porn star is selling an NFT of her boobs today. Okay, this one. All right, great. That's some good content. Let's go. Yeah, there's a new one every day. Yeah, you, they get like they get more new releases than the whole video game industry. Because, hey, it actually looks cool now. I'd given up on this game years ago for reasons we're going to go into a little bit later. But just look at this change, guys. From an isometric game Wait. you could confuse with early Lost Ark. Bro, I watched this like... I watched this game like six years ago. I thought it was awesome. Holy shit. Dark footage, or maybe even, you know, Die Blow Immortal, to this. Ooh. Wow. Holy shit, that's incredible. This looks cool. I mean, frame rate is fucking garbage, but you know. Wait, look at that. Wait, wait, yo, 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 real quick. L let me go back real quick. Watch. Are these all players fighting this NPC? Look at that. Holy shit, that's really cool, man. The giants are siege machines? Wow. I mean, that looks cool, man. Yeah, this is... Cool. Now, first things first, let me break the most important news to you. Okay. Project TL is not a mobile game. For once, we get to talk about cool looking. Wow. That's, uh, that, that's amazing. Imagine a game that's not on mobile. Incredible. That's a good start. In MMO that isn't also on mobile. Now, there is, of course, multiple reasons I'd given up on Project TL, and one of them, of course, is because of the development hell. You know, 11 years, yeah. no news, no new trailers, anything. That's actually what happened with Diablo. Uh, Diablo 3 was uh, developed for so long. I think that's why the game was so fucked whenever it got released. Is it just, they spent so long developing the game. It's the same as like uh, like Overwatch came from, I think, Project Titan, which was uh, Blizzard's other game. So yeah, 11 years? Holy shit, dude. Like that. And the other is or because playing the game Cataclysm was running against then. during that development. That game, of course, being Lost Ark by Smilegate. These two projects were neck and neck in development, both starting in 2011. And then Project TL just sort of, you know, never, never did anything or wow. showed any progress at all. Meanwhile, Lost Ark made everyone's mouth wet. It released to critical acclaim and big numbers in Korea. Yeah. And then, of course, went on to release in multiple other territories, all with varying degrees of success. If you were following both these games throughout those years, Project TL seemed like a waste of time at that point. And maybe, just maybe, that's why NCSoft took it back to the drawing board and came back with what looks like at least a visual banger. So that hit... I mean, it looks great to me. It's a, you know, a knight uh, with a, a great sword uh, walking through a castle. I, I, I feel like um, I, I feel like this could be a good game. Yep. I, I feel like it could be a good game. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens, but I don't know. Visual banger. So that history is exactly why I was surprised. Don't trust in any new gameplay oh, the game could Because suck the only too. reason we ever even knew Project oh, Hill know. wasn't cancelled was due to somebody deep down. As I said, I mean, every MMO is subject to the MMO paradox. 
the less you know about the game, the more hyped you are for it. And the more you know about the game, the less hyped you are for it. In the NCSoft financial reports a couple times per year where they would just mention Graphics the game still nice. exists. I mean, look at the Wikipedia page. That tells you everything you need to know. They planned Lineage the beta Eternal. for 2013. Yes, that's what it was. And I think the last time we saw any gameplay released for this project, people were still optimistic that Star Citizen would launch ever. And, you know, that tells you how long ago this was. Oh, that being wow. said, it does look like they've decided not to come out six years too then. late and live in the shadow of their competitor, Lost Ark, which is still banging out in Korea and recently on the Western market and instead go for True. a next-gen console slash PC launch to compete with the likes of Black Desert Online. But with that lineage flair, and I say lineage flair because this was originally developed as Lineage 3. It was the next yeah. generation PC console lineage game. Although they have since decided to turn this into a separate IP with the extremely generic name of Throne and Liberty. They do seem to want to move away from Lineage. I think that like, uh, that might be a good idea to just make a new IP rather than just try to use the same IP over and over and over a bad name. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't really care if it's a bad name. Like, PUBG was a stupid name. I still played the game. Like, who gives a shit? A little bit for whatever reason. And this Throne and Liberty series is actually going to be expanded upon with multiple games. This one in particular is set to launch on a global scale simultaneously Great. in the second half of 2022. So Holy it's not that far away from this video. This is not Holy one of those shit. where we're like, oh, it looks cool, but you know, wake me from my slumber in five years. Yeah, exactly. And as for what to expect, wow. let's refer to the developer's word. And please be aware, this is, of course, auto-translate from a Korean interview, so there might be some slight errors. Okay. Now, regarding field play, quote, for example, there have been various attempts to make field play less monotonous. Even in the same area, the terrain may change as the weather changes. The flow of battle may change depending on the direction of the wind, and you may encounter new mobs over time. Hunting methods and purposes are constantly changing accordingly. The field, the environment, and the player, these three factors influence each other, and we put a lot of effort into making the play come out in different ways, even in the same area. That's Various cool. Various variables are expected to create a variety of play. This, of course, is something we've heard touted in MMORPG development and promotion since the late 90s, and almost never has it actually added meaningful elements of gameplay avenues, but they at least talk about some specifics later on in the interview. For instance, arrows are going to travel different... Yeah, it's like, for example, like in New World, ghosts only spawn at night. You know, it's like a little small things like that. I think that's cool. I think the Gleamite meteors would only come down at night as well. Yeah, very spooky. So, like, usually the, like, day and night cycle stuff doesn't translate very well to being good content. But we'll see. ...during a storm due to the wind. You know, they'll have less range. Maybe they'll change... See, like, that sounds like a really cool idea, but I just think it's going to be annoying to play. Like, whenever I hear, like... Shooting a bow, the direction and strength of the wind affects the range. You know what that tells me? Thank God I'm using a sword. Direction. And That's the first thing I think. Yeah, fuck from that. Single target when it's sunny to AOE attacks during the rain. This is also going to play a factor during competitive gameplay as well, such as when there is a castle siege happening. You could normally use a sewer as an alternate path to breach the walls. That's cool. But during rainstorms, it might be inaccessible. It might be flooded out. Players can also try that to makes it interesting. I like times, that. That's cool. A solar eclipse or a rainstorm. So presumably that's a mechanic to try and have the odds of the elements in your favor. In terms of content focus. I think like the idea of a siege in the middle of a solar eclipse would be really fucking cool, man. That would be absolutely badass. It's kind of like, do you guys remember back in like PUBG, how cool it was if you got a fog map? Like, I remember, like, whenever we get a fog map, it was like, oh, shit, you know, oh, shit, okay, it's, it's like this, right? It was so badass, man. It was cancer. No, I thought it was cool. Uh, I thought it was really, really cool. Fog maps were scary. I liked it a lot. Yeah, so, like, having a cool, uh, like, a, like, weather effects and stuff like that and having it affect what's going on is a big deal for me. I think that's badass. Because what I could find wasn't huge. They basically say that they're going for a two-pronged approach. The first being story, and I know I, I can already read the comments. A lot of people are going to be talking about, you know, South Korean MMOs have bad story. But hear me out on this one. I don't okay. think South Korean MMOs typically have bad story. I just think they tell their story in bad ways, at least for what... Well, a lot of the times, like, at least I, I know with, uh, with Lost Ark, it's very... What's the word for it? It's very formulaic. There's no, like, real twists and turns. It's just kind of... 
you know, it's like, I mean, that's the thing with Shadowlands. It's like Shadowlands could have been a really good story. And I think if you had to tell the same story, like, and you just gave it to like a, a team that was better at telling it, it would be good. It would be a great story. So like, if the way that you tell a story isn't part of the quality of the story, I feel like the two are interchangeable. And like, they're, they're so intertwined that it's hard to, to, to separate them. We're used to. In fact, Black Desert Online is heralded as having a terrible story. But if you actually go read their lore snippets throughout the knowledge system and follow everything, go to their website, read the things, it's actually a really well-built game world with a deep story spanning, you know, hundreds of years. The issue is that they don't convey the story very well in the main questing system. I can't think of any game like that. Of most people's experience with it. Yeah. Most people are not going to go deep wow. dive the wiki or go read So you have to read a notes. bunch of, like, external stuff to quest. know what's going and on? If the quests are boring, they're going to start Damn, skipping them. bro. That is, of course, their wow. own failing for not making the story engaging enough wow. in the system that most people will experience the story. But if they put a focus on story and tell it well, there's no reason it can't be good. It's not like they just can't write good stories. They just overall don't focus on it all too much because that's not... I feel like the story in a game can be like... Think about like the story in like Mists of Pandaria or the story in Legion. The story in Legion and Mists of Pandaria was good, but most people didn't really give a shit about it that much. But like it, it, the story has to be really bad or really good for people to care about it. It's like in in uh, in BFA, people didn't like the story that much, or in Shadowlands, people don't like the story that much. In Final Fantasy, they like it a lot, and so that's like a big positive. But for a game like Lost Ark, Lost Ark's story is just it is a story, you know, it is a story. There are characters in the story, characters do things in the story, and events occur which lead those characters to future events that occur within the story, and there are words that those characters say. And uh, there are endings to certain stories, and then other stories continue going on. Uh, there are climaxes, there are low points and high points in the story. And what I'm really trying to say is that Lost Ark has a story. That's right. And that's about all I can say. It does, and, and like nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. It doesn't really matter that much. And because people aren't there for the gameplay, it's not, it's not embarrassingly bad. It does have some kind of ridiculous moments to it, but for the most part, it's just like, it is what it is. So yeah, I, I like Lost Ark Story. Some parts of it are, are good, but like what I'm trying to get at is like, it's not award winning and it's not award losing. It's not Shadowlands and it's not Shadowbringers. That's all I'm trying to get at typically why people play their games. The second focus is of course on competitive content, which is another huge focus of Korean games. As we see from the trailer, there are bosses in the game that look like they take dozens, maybe hundreds of players to defeat. That's as cool. well as what I imagine are castle sieges and large scale PvP I have to get new from graphics that same card, footage. Though. Realistically, anyone who's ever played a lineage game before knows that there was massive focus on that PvP. So God damn, dude, I never this played this game. That looks so cool. Feature of Project TL. And again, this is no longer Lineage 3, so it doesn't have to follow in the same path. Holy but shit. It was built as Lineage 3 for about a decade, so it does make wow. a lot of sense. One of the coolest features about this game that they showed, of course, is the ability to transform. In Some context, by the way, is... um. Steven, the guy who's making Ashes of Creation, the head of the uh, of the studio, one of his big inspirations uh, for Ashes of Creation it was was Lineage 2, right? It was a big game he used to play back in the day. That and uh, Arc Age. And so he, like, I'm hoping that Ashes of Creation is going to have stuff like this. And, and what they've shown in Castle Sieges is that they will. Uh, I'm really, really excited for that. Yeah, I, for whatever reason, I just missed out on Lineage 2. Like, I'm looking at this game, and like, dude, I would have played this game all day, every day. Like, w w when did this game come out? Like, 2003, something like that, I would guess? Bro, I would have been on this game, like, nonstop. Of course, he's the ability to transform into animals. The core philosophy yeah. for this feature is that they want to heavily limit the amount of fast travel in the world, such as teleportation. So more akin to, say, Black Desert Online as opposed to Lost Ark, where teleporting is constant you just do and it, the world yeah. is less of a focus after the first clear. This isn't limited to a single animal either. You One reason why people are more okay with fat, with not having fast travel in, in, in Black Desert, and like at least this is why I was okay with it, is because you could auto-run. 
So like you could, you know, like how in on like your ship in Lost Ark, you can kind of like set a point, uh, like a trajectory for your ship to go in. Well, that's the way that it worked back in uh in fucking the other game, right? That I was thinking of in Black Desert is you could do that. Yeah, you could travel in general, right? Horses are fast as fuck. Yeah, but you could just go AFK and let the character do it for you. So like if they're not gonna have fast travel, then they should have auto run or something like that. Uh, that way people don't have to just like sit there and move their character for 10 minutes because that's what killed New World I think for a lot of people is just the amount of downtime that they had going from point A to point B that shit took forever you can go from land water and air transformations depending on your situation as well as you can also pick up other players mm -hmm. they are also developing another game alongside throne and liberty which of course plays into the fact that they're making this a new ip just like lineage was what's this and the working title for this game is project e these games are going to exist in okay. the same timeline on the same planet and share the same history with each other but the details are a little bit foggy how they're actually going to play out and how different the games are going to be okay. due to the korean translation and a lot of the key details are mostly story focused aside from the fact that project e is set on the eastern continent of this planet and project tl is set on the west so this oh, is so they're setting cool up like an expansion something that that's they go smart. in depth with and they actually feel connected as games yeah that's really they smart don't play like each other in any kind of way and they're not designed to be played for you know people play both games then it might, you know, just be a complete non-factor. We'll just have to wait and see what they do with it, I guess. That so that all cool. being said, some obvious things to talk about that I can't possibly forget. This is a game from South Korea in the MMORPG genre from NC. <laughs> I, I like how he says that. And all he has to do is explain what it is. And people are like, yeah, that's true. Yep. Oh, boy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Duffed. And that means no matter what happens, it will be on the scale of pay-to-win. Being realistic <laughs> here, almost every yeah. single MMORPG is pay-to-win at this point, and we just have to judge whether or not the game is still going to be fun for us as individuals, and if the level of pay- I wish, uh, I, I wish the player bases could get together and say they don't like this and just, like, kind of shut it down. Uh, it, it's very unfortunate for me to see that people- like, I, I know this is a losing battle, right? That's why I don't really care. I don't really fixate on it as much anymore and, and everything like that. But, like, like with WoW tokens, it's pay to win. With, like, a bunch of stuff, it's pay to win, right? With, like, a Lost Ark, they have a million elements of pay to win. Like, they just don't really... People just don't really give a shit about it anymore. And it's just, like, I, I wish gamers treated pay to win the same way they treat NFTs. Like, if that happened video games in general would be a lot better if they just treated microtransactions in general the way that they treated uh nfts that would be so much better yeah horse armor was the worst thing bro we thought it was just one little thing and then it turned out that it wasn't literal decades of microtransactions wore them down yeah i i think so too uh but isn't though gamers as you call them not engage in microtransactions or pay to win normies do oh shut up um, let's, do you think pay to win is better than pay to subscribe? Um, in my opinion, this is kind of what I, I like the idea of in a free to play game. I, I like, even if a free to play game is pay to win, I think they should be able to make it pay to win. Right? Like, why not? Like, I'm not going to tell people what they can and can't do. Right. It's like went back to what I said before, but, um, I, I am against loot boxes. I will say this for sure. Like I am against loot boxes. I don't think that they should be legal. I think that loot boxes should be illegal. However, that being said, I think that if you want to make a game, make it pay to win, it's up to you, but it's also up to the, you to convince the audience that it's not. And the unfortunate reality is that a lot of people just don't care or they try to find excuses for why it's not pay to win. Whereas in my mind, right, Lost Ark's pay to win and so is WoW and I love playing both of the games. And, and like if I knew, for example, like me not playing the game, I could get everybody else to not play the game to try to like push for some sort of change, I would do it. But like it's just people just don't give a shit. Like they just they just don't care the same as I, I feel like they used to. I feel like people have just gotten worn down and like it just doesn't matter as much as it used to at all. So, yeah, uh, no need to be convinced. Just be honest. It's pay to win. Token isn't pay to win. I think it is. Uh, I think the wild token is pay to win. Uh, I, I, I think I can make a very strong argument that, that it is absolutely pay to win. And so, yeah, we grew up and got money. Yeah, but, like, there's kids that, that don't grow up, don't have the money. And there's plenty of people who grow up that still don't have the fucking money, right? Not everybody can be lucky enough to have a good job. So, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying.
I don't make pay to win if it doesn't ruin the game. Yeah, it's just like, I, I don't know. I, I wish the gaming communities in general would be more against this stuff, but it, people are just so, like, they're just so apathetic that even if, like, we we say, like, you know, in, in like, my stream, like, oh, we won't do anything that's pay to win, it doesn't really matter because there's just not enough of us to make a real impact. That, that's just, that's the truth. Or people uh, don't want to spend money just because it's not rewarding to pay to get stuff. Yeah, sure. It's not bad if a free to play player can compete with the pay to win player. Yeah, but if you can compete with the pay to win player, what the fuck? Do you, what the fuck are they paying for? You see what I'm saying? Being versus playing is acceptable enough to. Yeah, what are you paying fun. for? In an ideal They're world, they're pay to yada, lose. Yada, that yada, sucks. You know all the all the lines at this point. Personally, for me, the gameplay looks cool enough that I'll give it a try and see what this is about. And the fact that it isn't just Lost Ark, but likely worse makes me much more someone says pay for convenience is okay i disagree with that because what i think pay for convenience does is it creates a profit incentive for a developer to make their game inconvenient you see what i'm saying like it, it, it's like and what do you define as convenience it, it's just like yeah i i don't know man like i would say something like maybe poe stuff is like kind of pay for convenience and i'm okay with but i'm also a big poe fan so you know take that as you will all the all the lines at this point personally for me the gameplay looks cool enough that i'll give it a try and see what yeah. this is about i'll and give this a try too it isn't just lost ark but likely worse makes me much more excited to try out the game later this year yeah. as well as of course it's a global launch meaning we're not going to be watching koreans go hard in the paint with it for four years while we hide in the wardrobe jerking off looking through the keyhole and yeah true. it also isn't a mobile game so good on them i guess let's true and, see and what true we get. And thank you very much for watching. Like the video, subscribe for more content. I have a Patreon if you want to throw some money at me, which is always lovely. And I will hopefully see you next time. Stay safe out there. We're out. Peace. That was a good video. I'm glad that he got all that. That's a just simple, simple, easy to play video. Evil to do video, easy to do video. What do you think about skins? Um, I think that skins in a free to play game are, I mean, bro, like it's like just necessary in an extent, right? I mean, like how the fuck do you not have skins in a free to play game? Like how do you make money? And so, yeah, either way, Throne and Liberty, this is the video again, it's from Kira TV. I've seen a lot of his videos before. I think they're really good. And, um, you know, again, uh, it's a really, really simple and to the point video. I think he brought up a lot of good points and this is just in general, a very good uh, analysis of an early game like that. So yeah, I'm definitely happy. Let's watch Second Micromendal, it looks great. Yeah, I, I watched that off stream. Uh, and that's another one of the porn NFTs. Yeah, and that's what I was saying, right? It's like Kira puts out videos about this shit and it's fucking great. Uh, I love watching the NFT videos. I think they're fucking hilarious, okay?